You like <laughs> humiliated me after that. <laughs> yeah, step up your burp game. <laughs> okay, we have like ten beers, so <laughs> it can turn into a burp contest. Hi everyone, <laughs> my name is Ria, and welcome to my channel, a place where we talk about all things productivity, self improvement, and being your best self. Today I'm joined here by my friend Diego, who actually works with me in a tech startup company and we're gonna have a nice chat about work, life and everything in between. Well, my name is Diego, I, I'm originally from Mexico. We went to the same university in Abu Dhabi and yeah, we work together in a, in a tech company also here in Abu Dhabi. Um, so my title is uh, Business Development and Partnerships, but since it's a startup, like we pretty much do a little bit of everything. So that's something that she also experiences, like she she started working in communications and now she's working more in like sales and more like on the business side at the same time like i started as a bit like in the business side but then like at one point i was like working in like hr as well i think that's like a really cool thing about fintechs and yet like you really get to try a little like a little bit of everything and then i think that's super useful because you you know you you might not even know that you're really interested in something until you try or you might think that you really like something that you try and you just hate it at least personally for me like working in a startup has been like the best like possible job for for me at this point because i was like so confused right after college like i really didn't know what i wanted to do i worked in different industries i worked in vc i worked in consulting in controllership in a big corporation and even in a public sector in education so i really tried a little bit of everything and there was nothing that i was really passionate about and I think I was so frustrated because I, I just wouldn't be able to find something like meaningful, you know, like something that would fulfill me or excite me. So you think that work needs to be meaningful? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you don't want to hate your life. I mean, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you don't care about that, then just go into investment banking or consulting. I just know a lot of econ majors who do just feel like work is a way to get as much money as possible and they don't care about how fun it is or not. I mean, I was definitely like that at one point. I can deny, like, I feel like for my first three years, mm -hmm. I, like, I definitely used to think that way. Like, I, I was very... I was really indifferent about like what type of job I wanted to do just because like I didn't discover any of my passions until like the very end of my senior year what? so I was like okay like if I, I really don't mind working in like a big corporation or working in the public sector so I would rather go somewhere that pays me well so like for me that was the logic um, behind like my career choices but then I don't know, I think it was just like, everything was so quick in college. I, you know, like even, like during the during the semester, you'd have so many things to do. And then over the summer, like an internship. And then, I don't know, like there was this summer I did two internships. Two at once? <laughs> yeah, like. So like you did two at the same time or one the first part yeah. of summer, one the second So seven person. weeks and then seven weeks. Wow. And even though I was in Mexico, I, I only had like six days with my family. Which was really upsetting, and that's when I realized, yeah, like I really needed like more balance in my life, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. I feel like in my senior year, I, I just like burnt out. Mm -hmm. So I like even though I still wanted to like perform at the same level as in my first three years of uni, I just couldn't. I just literally just burnt out, mm -hmm. and I was like, I don't want that to happen once I start working. So like I really need to make a choice that will allow me to have this balance. Yeah. And I feel like in an industry like consulting or finance, the expectation is you're constantly burning out, you're always burnt out, that's just the norm. Yeah, I mean like, the question is not whether it will happen, the question is when it's gonna happen. And then how are you gonna handle it? Like, how well can you handle your burnout? Gotcha. This is how we'll assess your performance. <laughs> <laughs> want to, that should be like in an honest interview. We should like role play like a <laughs> honest like an, consulting an interview, interview. Honest <laughs> consulting interview. So how many, <laughs> uh, dear Ria, how many breakdowns can you handle per week? I'd say an average of one point five a day. Good enough. But <laughs> <laughs> so you said you didn't discover your passions until your senior year. What are your passions? 
Well, I still don't have it very clear, mm -hmm. to be honest. But I think that at this point, I really enjoy my job. That's good. And I, I feel like it just, it, it just like changed my, like my mentality just changed in the way that before I, I really wanted, you know, like I, I really pushed myself to find what my passion was. And right now, um, I just have like a lot of interests and I feel, you know, like my job I really like. So, you know, like the tech industry is something that I really want to continue working on. Fashion, music, uh, philosophy, those are all the things that I really value, like having the time to explore those things. Definition and of a liberal arts student. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it would have really in. <laughs> Technology, <laughs> Could <be worse>. fashion. <laughs> Oh, what else did you say? Philosophy. <laughs> that was so like a liberal arts student. Would you say you were more confident at this point than like, yeah. you were in high school? In high school, I was super depressed. Really? Yeah. Was it mainly because of the medication or were there like... I didn't take years? medication in high school. I started taking exactly. medication in college. Yeah. So was that like really I a game changer? I needed medication. <laughs> it was like... Yeah, it was a big game changer. Yeah, I also, mean it was like literally like a necessity. Like, yeah. There is no other word to describe it. Yeah, also, I didn't get along with my family very much. Like, now I have a great relationship with my mother and my family. I love but that. I met her family, by the way. Yeah, yeah, he met my family. He met my <laughs> And they siblings. almost gave me COVID. <laughs> we almost gave him COVID, but then... They didn't. A different story so for another good. day. <laughs> you hang out with us, with us once, you get COVID. <laughs> But I didn't get along with my family at all back then, and I was having a really tough time living there. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, my relationship with my family has always been very like messy as well, except with my mom. Um, but I think it's gotten way better as yeah. I get older. I think there are a lot of people who have a really tense relationship with their parents when they live in the same house, and the second you move out, it improves so much. Just because you have like space and you have more freedom and. Exactly. And you can actually have a relationship on adult terms as opposed to them bossing you around because you're a kid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. I really need to take it out. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, <laughs> humiliated me after that. <laughs> yeah, step up your burp game. <laughs> okay, we have like 10 beers, so <laughs> it can turn into a burp contest. One of my favorite YouTubers, um, her name is Emma Chamberlain. Do you know her? Mm -mm. She burps like 10 times in every video. Oh, it's so nice. <laughs> like, I want to copy her, but I don't burp that much. <laughs> <laughs> Just drink beer before your videos and while you're making your videos. <laughs> Just like always drinking soda. <laughs> so Sipping all the time. Sip girl. That's the secret to YouTube success. You just need to burp a lot. <laughs> No, actually, no, like, I remember, like, when I was in middle school, like, okay, we were, like, segregated, so it was, like, one class, like, it was a mixed school, a co-ed school, but then one classroom would be just for guys and one for girls. That's interesting, I didn't know Mexico did that. <clears throat> I went to a Catholic school. Oh, okay, that explains it. <laughs> that okay. explains everything, yeah. But, so, yeah, like, when I was in, like, sixth grade, which was the last year before, like, mixing, um, girls and boys, um... <laughs> I remember I felt really like, like I just couldn't keep up at the same level because everyone would like burp so much. <laughs> I would do my best and I just could not. <laughs> like I really pushed my like pushed myself to my limits. <laughs> and I was like, if I try harder, I'm just gonna vomit. Oh, on the teacher. Once I like vomited on the teacher because she didn't let me go to the bathroom. And I was like, I'm sick. <laughs> She's like, let me finish this. And I like I was I've always been like the nerd of like the class, so obviously I'd sit in the front. She wouldn't let me go to the bathroom, even though I was like the best possible student you can imagine. Like so polite, like wouldn't talk unless you would ask me to talk. <laughs> like yeah. pretty much like a slave. I don't know. She was like literally reading, um, like a tale, like yeah, a tale, to like in front of the class. Yeah. And I remember I was just like in front, and I. I don't know, like, I, everything was so dizzy that I couldn't really, like, make sense of what was going on. Yeah. And at one point, like, I just, I just vomited and she was, like, right, it happened that she was in front of me. <laughs> so I remember she, she was so, like, like, traumatized. Like, she literally dropped the book and I saw it, like, falling in slow-mo, like, just, like, falling to the floor. Um, I remember I started crying because I felt really bad. <laughs> of course! I didn't vomit on the teacher, but I was in, like, a third or fourth grade. And I was also really sick, and I was also like a really good girl, and the teacher loved me. And 
I, I was raising my hand to ask to go to the bathroom because I knew I was about to vomit. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there with my raised hand, but the mm -hmm. teacher was talking, so she didn't ask me yet. And as she like turns to ask me, I just vomit on my desk. <laughs> okay, what about- And then I'm like, that's what I wanted to ask. <laughs> We should like get back to productivity. Oh yeah. What's your least favorite thing about our company? I don't know, like obviously like it's very unstructured, but I kind of like that because you can really like take um, initiative and anything you want, you know, like there's no one who is like only doing a certain thing. So it's not like, um, <clears throat> I, I just feel like there are no boundaries. Like you can really do whatever you want to participate in. So, you know, like, I feel like the whole company is just, it works that way. Like, you know, it can be not, not as efficient as it could possibly be, but at the same time, it allows you to really explore a lot of different things. So I feel like every single, like, bad thing I think of, like, there is always, like, a good thing that I like about those things. Mm, that's true, that's true. What kind of job do you see yourself doing after you're done with the startup? I honestly have no idea. Like, I think... <clears throat> I like management and I like sales um, and I think I'm like a um, like a people's person yeah. so I I definitely like interacting with people and just um, yeah just having like you know like meeting new people like every day that could be like the next step in the long term I definitely see myself working in the like in education something related to education why? For starter, starters, my mom is a teacher, an elementary school teacher. She's been a teacher, DJ. a DJ. <laughs> um, yeah, she's been a teacher for over 40 years. Mm -hmm. So, I, I don't know, I think I've, I've seen the impact that she's had on people. And, um, I mean, I know it sounds really cheesy, but, um, like, education really changed, like, my life. As in... I went to like a public school for my entire life and you know I was always really encouraged by my mom to like do well in school and I, I, I liked it so and I was like one of those people who like would try like extra hard and then when I was 16 I got a scholarship to study in an international boarding school and I fuck, that was crazy like I like I went overboard like I would sleep I would sleep three hours just because I was studying all the time I learned English there I was doing the IV in English which I didn't speak um, so <clears throat> for me it was really challenging but obviously like it opened doors mm -hmm. and then I got to go to NYU and now I have like a really comfortable life. I don't know what would be on my life. Like actually my plan was going to like <laughs> the US and work as a like painter. It's like an undocumented oh immigrant. My God. That was literally my plan after, um, after high school because I started working when I was 14. So I was like saving money just to like literally buy me like a flight ticket. Last question. What tips do you have for people to become more productive? Um, honestly, I feel like, I mean, personally, like once my, like once I started working on my mental health, I think I just like automatically became like way more productive. So, you know, like I feel like you can learn so many different methods, but if you're not, like in a good space mentally, like, you know, like somehow like it's just not gonna work out. So for me, like, you know, like I didn't even like notice about the improvement on my productivity until I really focused on my mental health. And I don't know, like everything just seems like so smooth. And, um, you know, I think like that's literally the best investment like you could possibly make in your life. Just actually like, you know, having conversations with yourself if you need professional help. Go with a counselor or a psychiatrist, um, journaling, meditating, um, exercise, mindful eating. I don't know, so many different ways in which you can um, improve it. And I, I'm pretty sure, you know, like, no matter how hard you try improving your productivity, I feel like if you're not, like, mentally stable, like, it's just not, like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to work out. Um... I agree. I mean, I think that's one of the things that I really want to do. Like, I feel like the productivity space as a space on the internet and as a group of people completely lacks awareness about mental health. Absolutely. I was so surprised. That just hurts me, you know, as a person that struggles with a mental illness and that's been 
like really into mental health and trying to improve it because otherwise it can't do anything. Exactly. Like, it, it hurts me to see how many people preach, oh, just work harder. And just work harder doesn't work if you're depressed or just work or smarter. Like Yeah, you should work smarter. And working smarter means like working on your mental health and making sure everything's okay up there. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like school for me, like, you know, like, it really taught me that. Like, I would work so hard. Like, I would barely get any sleep. Like, I would eat like shit. I, like, I cut off so many people just because I was working on school and just so, like, you know, my mind was, like, fully occupied on, like, career and school and grades and everything. And I think, um, <laughs> I ended up doing well, like I'm very satisfied with everything, but then I, I really wonder, you know, like what if I would have, you know, once I started, like allowed myself to, you know, not do well, like just do whatever I could uh, and really like work on habits, like eating better, uh, exercising, meditating for just five minutes per day, you know, like these type of things, like what the outcome would have been and i feel like it would have been so worth it even if my grades wouldn't been as as the ones i had at the end like it really would have been so worth it and you know like i i feel like i would have had like a clear idea of what i wanted to do by the end of college um but i mean that's how you learn by fucking yeah. up so i i, I don't regret really that yeah 20 something like we're both younger than 25 like we have a lot of time to fix things Thank you so much for being Thanks. in this video. We loved having you on here. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to see more content like this. Press the bell to be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. And remember to stay awesome. Bye-bye!